And the first problem that we will look at is the problem of clustering. The clustering problem. This is uh, the first uh, or the most basic algorithm in the family of unsupervised machine learning. And the idea is very simple. We want to take a group of patients or whatever it is, a group of several items, and to split all the set, all the data set, into different clusters, into different subgroups. Here in this example, we have a very, very tiny EMR, electronic medical record. So in our clinics, uh, we have only 14 patients, as you can see in this table. And for each patient, we have uh, different uh, variables that we measure uh, in their bloods. Um, so as you can see, uh, white blood cells, red blood cells, potassium, ALTST, and so on, hematocrit, whatever. And what we want to do is to say, OK, this is my community. Do I see here some kind of trends, some kind of patterns, some kind of groups, some kinds of families? And just because it's hard to see 10 dimensions at once, let's look just, just for the sake of this lesson. Let's look just on three, on potassium, white blood cells, and hemoglobin. Okay? So if I'm looking just at these numbers, here I have 14 patients with three variables, and I just throw them into a three-dimensional uh, plot. Okay? Sometimes I can see something like that if I just put them in this three-dimensional space. Of course, in reality, we will have 10-dimensional space or 100-dimensional space, but let's say only three. So very clearly do I see groups. And this is an information. It's not written explicitly in the data, but this is an information that I can derive, uh, that I can infer out from the data. And this is what I ask the computer to do. I ask the computer not just to visualize it, because sometimes you cannot even visualize it, but I want the computer to give me those definitions of the circles that you see here. So I want the computer to be able to tell me, here you have one group, here you have the second group, here you have three groups, and then you see maybe different species of patients, or species of diseases, or species of uh, variants, or variants, and so on or of immune systems. And the definitions for the computer when we ask the computer to give us these definitions are, computer, computer, please give me clusters where, because we need to, to explain to the computer what is a cluster. So a, comp a, a good clustering is where the intra-cluster distances are minimized, all the distances between patients from within the same cluster, and the intercluster distances are maximized. This is how we define good clustering. So I say, computer, computer, please test all, please examine whatever you need. All different combinations or all different definitions of clusterings so that the, in each cluster, the, inter, the intracluster distances are minimized and the distance between the clusters are maximized. That, if and when the computer finds that, that probably represents the natural um, phenomenon in nature, what we see in nature, what we have in nature, what God created. Okay? So the computer, out from the data, derives information according to these laws and finds some kind of uh, explanation how different patients in this example behave or how they are split into different species, races, and so on. Okay, so back again to the data. This is the data. Uh, what we need is some kind of a split. So we say patients 1, 3, 5, 8, 12, 13 is one group, patients 2, 7, 14 in another group, and so on. So we have here, let's say, three groups. This is what we want the computer to uh, provide us. And now let's go back again and see it from a high level. So is this a more statistical approach? Is this more individualized approach? 
you can see here clustering by, by, by definition is under the statistical approach. But now let's look not only at, um, st um, at static data, like I showed here in the EMR of 14 different patients, but let's look what happens over time. So let's see, let's say I have this very clean, very nice data set. Here we see six patients, but we measure them over time and we have all these different dots. So uh, individualized interpretation could be just to connect the dots. And in this case, it's fantastic because uh, the dots are uh, very clean and close. Uh, so the uh, sampling is frequent and there's not lo a lot of noise. So that's fantastic. But even so, what do we see here? Come on. Two groups. Two groups. You see it. All right. There are those patients that goes like this and patients that goes like this. Okay. So although it is the perfect individualized interpretation and I can show that I made the, in the interpretation between two tiny dots the perfect one, it still does not answer the question, no. what is the information here? Maybe yes. one group if we will select the first one before, then maybe it had the same pattern. So you say maybe in, the co in a bigger context, if we took even before? Five years before, and they had like, okay, you are right, you are right, but net, but again, when we uh, encounter a, prog a problem, okay, we need to uh, put everything in a context or in a perspective. This is the data. This is the input. Everything is possible, of course. But this is the input. I need an output, which is some kind of information, some kind of knowledge, some kind of conclusion probably an intelligent one out of this data. Of course, I can have also the statistical interpretation. And the statistical interpretation will be doing some kind of an average. And this is the average line. If I take all the dots in at each time and do just average, this is what I will take. And this is also not so good because it doesn't represent the true nature of what is happening in the immune battle. And later on when we will go to the topics of personalized medicine, we will understand that patients that have this kind of trend or this kind of behavior, we call it kinetics, this kind of kinetics will receive a different drug than patients who have this kind of kinetics and they will have different results. But even if I have such theoretical, very, very clean and very, very uh, uh, a nice data and I just do statistics, I get the wrong picture. Okay, what we want to do is to do something else. We do, we do want to do something that is clustering based. So we say here, okay, wait, I have two different groups. I have the blue patients and I have the green patients. And what I would like to do is to do statistics, but separated to each group. Here is where we combine something that is individualized. So I look at one patient, I find its or his uh, friends, okay? And then I do statistics on this group. And then when I do that, this is the information I get. Yeah. So I say, bye. okay, I have many patients, but what I see here are two very clear in, uh, behaviors, two very clear kinetics, the blue kinetics, the green kinetics. It means something else from the immunological point of view. We will touch that after in, in a different lecture. But, but this is what I want to do. This is the kind of information that I want to infer out of the data. OK? Sounds reasonable, right? So. Um, and of course, it's not that, that problem of clustering is, is not just for phenotypic data. We use it a lot in genomic data as well. And you've seen some of the uh, examples uh, in the um, bioinformatics course. And you will see it also in systems biology in other courses. OK. Now I want to make like a different to come up with a different angle and to ask what is the mathematical basis of this 
very nice question. Yeah.